So in this video, we're going to be talking about the new ChatGPT API. OpenAI just announced the public beta of the underlying model that runs ChatGPT. The name of the model is GPT-35 Turbo. I'm going to do a quick walkthrough of the new API, and then I'll show you how we can use the API to build a simple Python web app powered by the ChatGPT model. The final app we build will look like this. I'll make all the source code available so you can play around with it in your own environment. Okay, let's get started. A couple of things to get out of the way first. If you already have the OpenAI Python library installed on your computer, you're going to need to update it to the latest version. Normally, pip install OpenAI is going to handle this, but at least in my case, I found pip install wasn't working. When I ran pip freeze to check the version post pip install, I wasn't coming up with the new version. I ended up having to run a force install while specifying the latest version. That, for me at least, resolved things. All right, now that we have the install out of the way, let's go ahead and launch Jupyter Notebooks. So this is the first example that OpenAI provides to get you started with the new API. You can see it's a slightly different call than before when we were calling completion.create, now we chat completion.create. Also, the parameters are a little different. Our model is now the new GPT-3.5 Turbo. And then we have this list with a dictionary of kind of specially formatted terms with a conversation history here with initial system message, then a user question, then an assistant response, and then another user question. Let's go and run this quickly just to see what happens. And you can see we have our response here to that final question that was asked. The first thing to understand when looking at this model is the ChatGPT model, ultimately it's using a very similar API to what you used before when you made a completion call. What's different is what the data you send to the API looks like. Whereas before you were sending single completions, you now need to send data to the API so that it can keep track of a multi-turn conversation. Another important thing to understand is that the ChatGPT model has no memory of the previous questions that you ask. To the model, each question and corresponding call to the API is essentially a brand new conversation. The fact that it feels like the model remembers your question is just that with each new question you ask, behind the scenes we are running this specially formatted transcript of the conversation so far. Let's go and look at an interactive example to make this a little bit more clear. So I'll run this example first and then we'll go from there. So. We have an interactive chat box, so we'll ask a question. Who is the inventor of the C programming language? I can type. There we are. And we'll ask it a follow-up question. Who was the co-author on that on the book? And we'll go and stop this keyboard interrupt just because we've stopped it. And then let's look at how this is broken down. So initially we're setting up a list with the first item from the previous code example. So you see here, they were showing us how you build this conversation history, but they were doing it manually and giving you the initial system message that is just telling your assistant, your bot, how it's supposed to behave, how it's supposed to act. And then this was kind of a simulated initial user question that was given. This was the first response. And then this is the follow-up question. In our case, we have that initial system message we initialized to this list. Then we start taking user input. As soon as we have a question from the user, we then put it into this special format. We then append it to this conversation. We then call the API for response with the new model. As where with the completion call, this would have been like prompt equals here. This is messages equals, and we draw it back to here. So it gets both our system message and the question that the user asked. And then when it returns a response, we're going to go and one will print it out, but we're also then adding that response to our conversation history such that it, as we answer progressively more and more questions, that way, each time it's able to have the context of the previous conversation. If we weren't doing that, it would just 
literally have no idea from one question to another what had happened. So because it doesn't truly have memory, this is how you simulate memory by each time giving it the entire conversation history as far as you can go. There is a limit to this. So this API currently has a 4096 token limit. So once you have a conversation history that hits that level, you have to start breaking it up, either dropping the oldest messages or doing something such that otherwise you're going to start getting error messages. So you need to go and be able to prune the earlier parts of the conversation. We're not doing that here. This is just to show you the basic flow, but we'll also go and let's look at conversation and print that right now. So you can see at the beginning is our system message, your helpful assistant. There was our first question. There was our answer from the assistant. Here's our follow-up question. Here's the answer from the assistant. And it would keep flowing like this as we went. You can also, if we go beyond this, you can see that you have a lot of the same parameters that you had before. So we can play with the temperature and rather than just using the default. So let's try doing, I think this is between zero and two, something like that. Let's try doing two. We can also add the max tokens to 250. Top P will leave a 0.9 for right now. Let's try this again. Who is the author? of the C programming language. I've had Inventor before, so slightly different question. And then who was co-author? And first program. There we go, and we get kind of a nicely formatted response. And so now we'll stop again. And again, just to illustrate what's going on here, we'll now print the conversation. Of, and you can see we have this entire history that's passed on, but once we get to the point of that 4096 token limit, we'd need to start either truncating the beginning or dropping uh, and popping parts of that conversation off. From here, now that you have this basic structure, I want to show you how easy it is to go and put this into something that's a little bit more interesting to look at. So for that, I have Visual Studio over here. And if you look at this code, it's very similar, and we'll put it side by side for a second. So ultimately we have the wall well, true here, and that's very similar to under our app.route, um, our def completion response here. And what this will allow us to do, and so there's also some other pieces to this since this is a Python Flask app. So we do have index.html that's controlling how some kind of our buttons will work and handling the passing of data. We also have a little customized, very basic style.css. But let's run this really quick and show you what this looks like. And so this gives us a nice little message box that we can go. And so we have just a little bit of a nicer interface to be able to play around and understand how this API works. This is certainly not a web application that we're not doing any input validation. This isn't something you could put online as something for people to play around with without seriously overhauling and locking down the code. But I find it can be really helpful just to be able to play with this locally, to understand what's going on and just to have something that's a little bit more interesting than kind of the standard, very simple demo examples that you get out of the docs. 
I'm going to post all of this code online. I'm also going to do a follow-up video where we'll go through handling once you're starting to get near that token limit, how you count the tokens as the questions are being typed and as the chat history is going on. But hopefully this is a good introductory video, give you some ideas of how to get things done. If you enjoyed this video, please do like and subscribe. It really helps me gauge interest. That's all for now. Thank you.